Anorak by NJ Foley, recorded in a really, really fucking rainy Paris. Anorak. He looked like the kind of man who watched birds for pleasure or children, maybe both. His eyes bulged out of his head, nearly touching the lenses of his glasses. He was pale, almost too pale to be alive, or wrapped up inside of a black and purple plastic anorak. I told you I don't have my receipt, anorak bald, jabbing a flaccid finger at me in an impotent rage. We can't accept a return on item without a receipt, sir, I explained for the fifteenth time. Anorak's eyes bulged further. His rodent-like wife muttered something under her breath. Silence fell for a blissful moment. Tranquility laced with anticipation ensued before he continued again. I will not leave until I receive a refund. This time he waved the cardigan he was trying to return as though leading a charge before slamming it down on the cash desk. His wife muttered something again. I looked at her and she at me, pure hatred in her eyes. I began to imagine them outside of this scenario, the endless drudgery of their sexless, hate-filled marriage. The only outlet for his frustration was on the professionally neutered service staff that he encountered. I almost pitied his existence. Even if you did have a receipt, sir, I am afraid we don't do refunds, I said, taking small solace that every word that left my mouth was pushing his blood pressure higher and higher. What do you mean you don't do refunds, Anorak squealed, his jowls pendulously shaking in tandem with his head. Our returns policy is printed on the back of the receipt. It's also displayed here, I said, gesturing to a sign next to the till. At this, his eyes began to inflate to maximum capacity, almost pushing the glasses off his nose. I want to talk to the manager, he ejaculated, commencing what he thought was a checkmate. We locked eyes. I'm afraid the manager has just gone on a lunch at the moment. If you return in an hour, I'm sure. Before I could finish, Anorak cut me off. I want to speak to them now, he said, slapping his fist down on top of the limp cardigan that lay on the desk. I looked around at the other customers in the shop. At this point, they had all begun to stop and stare. I was a gladiator in the Coliseum, they a nervous crowd waiting for each combatant to make the next move. I called my manager on her mobile and explained the situation. She came back red-faced, angry, hungry and ready for a fight. It didn't last all too long. In a few moments, Anorak had her in tears. His face had turned the purple of his Anorak, his pupils matched the soulless black. At the sight of a crying woman, one of the faceless onlookers decided to be a hero. You step forward, jabbing a counterfinger into Anorak's face. Does it make you feel big, making a woman cry? Hero aggressed, all the while Anorak stared at him in boggle-eyed surprise. Mind your own fucking business, Anorak spat. His wife taking two steps back, giving her husband space to explode. Hero shoved Anorak, Anorak shoved Hero back. I stood and watched, feeling like I was melting into the crowd myself. I wanted to slink away into the staff room, but I couldn't tear myself away from the pathetic spectacle. One slapped the other, the other slapped back. This obtuse display had the other customers in shock. Some began to film, others tried to separate the two. The pair of them were now rolling on the floor. Anorak's wife was screeching, Assault! 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 at the top of her voice. Before I knew it, the police had descended, splitting the two up. Both flustered, both embarrassed, both unscathed, other than their pride. The wife sat spitefully by the side, spitting her statement at the police. Disdain and hatred flecked her voice as she glanced over at me the entire time. A few weeks passed and the incident had begun to be forgotten. As usual, I rode the bus to work, reading the news as I went. To my surprise, there was Anorak staring back at me. A small section in the paper explaining how, the, how he had been killed by his wife. A frying pan to the face. I read and reread the article, unable to decide how I felt. I settled on pity. Almost pity, at the very least. I did chuckle a bit, though imagining it a bit like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. I couldn't help it. Or maybe I could and I didn't want to. I decided not to bother sharing it with my manager at work, unsure of how she would react. I decided that some things are best left forgotten, or lost, unless, of course, it's a receipt and you're looking to return a cardigan.